Greetings. This is video number 12 of the poem Savitri by Sri Aurobindo. I'm about to read Canto 14 of Book 2, The World Soul. A covert answer to his seeking came. In a far shimmering background of mind space, a glowing mouth was seen, a luminous shaft. A recluse gate, it seemed, musing on joy, a veiled retreat and escape to mystery. Away from the unsatisfied surface world, it fled into the, bos the bosom of the unknown, a well, a tunnel of the depths of God. It plunged as if a mystic groove of hope through many layers of formless, voiceless self, to reach the last profound of the world's heart, and from that heart there surged a wordless call, pleading with some still impenetrable mind, voicing some passionate unseen desire. As if beckoning a finger of secrecy, outstretched into a crystal mood of air, pointing at him from some near-hidden depth, as if a message from the world's deep soul, an intimation of a lurking joy that flowed out from a cup of brooding bliss, there shimmered stealing out into the mind, a mute and quivering ecstasy of light, a passion and delicacy of roseate fire. As one drawn to his lost spiritual home feels now the closeness of awaiting love, into a passage dim and tremulous that clasped him in from day and night's pursuit. He traveled led by a mysterious sound, a murmur multitudinous and lone, all sounds it was in turn, yet still the same, a hidden call to unforeseen delight. In the summoning voice of one long known, well loved, but nameless to the unremembering mind, it led to rapture back the truant heart. The immortal cry ravished the captive ear. Then, lowering its imperious mystery, it sank to a whisper circling round the soul. It seemed the yearning of a lonely flute that roamed along the shores of memory and filled the eyes with tears of longing joy. A cricket's rash and fiery single note, it marked with shrill melody night's moonless hush, and beat upon a nerve of mystic sleep, its high, insistent, magical rebiel. A jingling silver laugh of anklet bells traveled the roads of a solitary heart, it danced solaced and eternal loneliness. Oh, it's dance solaced and eternal loneliness. An old forgotten sweetness sobbing came, or from a far harmonious distance heard the tinkling pace of a long caravan. It seemed at times, or a vast forest's hymn, the solemn reminder of a temple gong, a bee croon honey drunk in summer aisles, ardent with ecstasy in a slumberous noon, or the far anthem of a pilgrim sea. An incense floated in the quivering air, a mystic happiness trembled in the breast, as if the invisible beloved had come, assuming the sudden loveliness of a face and close glad hands could seize his fugitive feet, and the world changed with the beauty of a smile. Into a wonderful bodiless realm he came, the home of a passion without name or voice, a depth he felt answering to every height, a nook was found that could embrace all worlds, a point that was the conscious knot of space, an hour eternal in the heart of time. The silent soul of all the world was there, 
a being lived, a presence and a power, a single person who was himself and all, and cherished nature's sweet and dangerous throbs, transfigured into beats divine and pure. One who could love without return for love, meeting and turning to the best, the worst. It healed the bitter cruelties of earth, transforming all experience to delight. Intervening in the sorrowful paths of birth, it rocked the cradle of the cosmic child and stilled all weeping with its hand of joy. It led things evil towards their secret good. It turned racked falsehood into happy truth. Its power was to reveal divinity. Infinite, coeval with the mind of God, it bore within itself a seed, a flame, a seed from which the eternal is newborn, a flame that cancels death in mortal things. All grew to all kindred and self and near. The intimacy of God was everywhere. No veil was felt, no brute barrier inert. Distance could not divide, time could not change. A fire of passion burned in spirit depths. A constant touch of sweetness linked all hearts. The throb of one adoration's single bliss in a rapt ether of undying love. An inner happiness abode in all, a sense of universal harmonies, a measureless, secure eternity of truth and beauty and good and joy made one. Here was the welling core of finite life. A formless spirit became the soul of form. All there was soul or made of sheer soul stuff. A sky of soul covered a deep soul ground. All here was known by a spiritual sense. Thought was not there, but a knowledge near and one, seized on all things a moved identity, a sympathy of self with other selves, a touch of consciousness on consciousness, and beings look on being with inmost gaze, and heart laid bare to heart without walls of speech, and the unanimity of seeing minds in myriad forms luminous with the one God. Life was not there, but an impassioned force, finer than fineness, deeper than the deeps, felt as a subtle and spiritual power, a quivering out from soul to answering soul, a mystic movement, a close influence, a free and happy and intense approach of being to being with no screen or check without which life and love could never have been. Body was not there, for bodies were needed not. The soul itself was its own deathless form. And met at once the touch of other souls, close, blissful, concrete, wonderfully true. As when one walks in sleep through luminous dreams and conscious, knows the truth their figures mean. Here, where reality was its own dream, he knew things by their soul and not their shape, as those who have lived long made one in love, need word nor sign for heart's reply to heart. He met and communed without bar of speech, with beings unveiled by a material frame. There was a strange spiritual scenery, a loveliness of lakes and streams and hills, a flow, a fixity in a soul space, and plains and valleys, stretches of soul joy, and gardens that were flower tract of the spirit in meditations of tinged reverie. Air was the breath of a pure infinite. A fragrance wandered in a colored haze, as if the scent and hue of all sweet flowers had mingled to copy heaven's atmosphere. Appealing to the soul and not the eye, beauty lived there at home in her own house. There all was beautiful by its own right,
and needed not the splendor of a robe. All objects were like bodies of the gods, a spirit symbol environing a soul, for world and self were one reality. Immersed in voiceless internatal trance, the beings that once were forms on earth sat there in shining chambers of spiritual sleep. Past were the pillar posts of birth and death. Past was their little scene of symbol deeds. Past were the heavens and hells of their long road. They had returned into the world's deep soul. All now gathered into pregnant rest. Person and nature suffered a slumber change. In trance they gathered back their bygone selves. In a background memories foreseeing muse, prophetic of new personality, arranged the map of their coming destiny's course. Heirs of their past, their future's discoverers, electors of their own self-chosen lot, they waited for the adventure of new life. A person persistent through the lapse of worlds, although the same forever in many shapes, by the outward mind unrecognizable, assuming names unknown in unknown climes, imprint through time upon the earth's worn page, a growing figure of its secret self, and learns by experience what the spirit knew, till it can see its truth alive and God. Once more they must face the problem game of birth, the soul's experiment of joy and grief, and thought and impulse lighting the blind act, and venture on the roads of circumstance, through inner movements and external scenes, traveling to self across the form of things. Into creation center he had come, the spirit wandering from state to state, finds here the silence of its starting point, in the formless force and the still fixity and brooding passion of the world of soul. All that is made and once again unmade, the calm, persistent vision of the one inevitably, inevitably remakes, it lives anew. Forces and lives and beings and ideas are taken into the stillness for a while. There they remold their purpose and their drift, recast their nature and reform their shape. Ever they change and changing ever grow and passing through a fruitful stage of death after a long reconstituting sleep resume their place in the process of the gods until their work in cosmic time is done. Here was the fashioning chamber of the worlds. An interval was left twixt act and act, twixt birth and birth, twixt dream and waking dream. A pause that gave new strength to do and be. Beyond were regions of delight and peace, mute birthplaces of light and hope and love, and cradles of heavenly rapture and repose. In the slumber of the voices of the world, he of the eternal moment grow aware. His knowledge stripped bare of the garbs of sense, knew by identity without thought or word. His being saw itself without its veils. Life's line fell from the spirit's infinity. A long road of pure interior light, alone between tremendous presences, under the watching eyes of nameless gods, his soul passed on, a single conscious power, towards the end which ever begins again, approaching through a stillness dumb and calm to the source of all things human and divine. There he beheld in their mighty union's poise the figure of the deathless two in one, a single being in two bodies clasped, a diarchy of two united souls, seated, absorbed in deep creative joy. Their trance of bliss sustained the mobile world. 
Behind them in a morning dusk one stood who brought them forth from the unknowable. Ever disguised she awaits the seeking spirit, watcher on the supreme unreachable peaks, guide to the traveler of the unseen paths. She guards the austere approach to the alone. At the beginning of each far-spread plain, pervading with her power the cosmic suns, she reigns, inspirer of its multiple works and thinker of the symbol of its scene. Above them all she stands supporting all, the sole omnipotent goddess ever veiled, of whom the world is the inscrutable mask. The ages are the footfalls of her tread, their happenings the figure of her thoughts, and all creation is her endless act. His spirit was made a vessel of her force. Mute in the fathomless passion of his will, he outstretched to her his folded hands of prayer. Then in a sovereign answer to his heart, a gesture came as of worlds thrown away, and from her raiment's lustrous mystery raised, one arm half parted the eternal veil. A light appeared, still and imperishable. Attracted to the large and luminous depths of the ravishing enigma of her eyes, he saw the, misting, the mystic outline of a face. Overwhelmed by her implacable light and bliss, an atom of her illimitable self, mastered by the honey and lightning of her power, tossed towards the shores of her ocean ecstasy, drunk with a deep golden spiritual wine, he cast from the rent stillness of his soul a cry of adoration and desire, and the surrender of his boundless mind and the self-giving of his silent heart. He fell down at her feet, unconscious, prone. That is the end of Canto 14 of Book 2 of the poem Savitry by Sri Aurobindo. This is Canto 15 of Book 2, The Kingdoms of the Greater Knowledge. After a measureless moment of the soul, again returning to these surface fields, out of the timeless depths where he had sunk, he heard once more the slow tread of the hours. All once perceived and lived was far away. Himself was to himself his only scene. Above the witness and his universe, he stood in a realm of boundless silences, awaiting the voice that spoke and built the worlds. A light was round him wide and absolute a diamond purity of eternal sight. A consciousness lay still, devoid of forms, free, wordless, uncoerced by sign or rule, forever content with only being and bliss. A sheer existence lived in its own peace, on the single spirit's bare and infinite ground. Out of the sphere of mind he had arisen, he had left the reign of nature's hues and shades. He dwelt in his self's colorless purity. It was a plane of undetermined spirit that could be a zero or round sum of things, a state in which all ceased and all began. All it became that figures the absolute, a high vast peak whence spirit could see the worlds, calm's white epiphany, wisdom's mute home, a lonely station of omniscience, a diving board of the eternal's power, a white floor in the house of all delight. Here came the thought that passes beyond thought. Here the still voice which our listening cannot hear, the knowledge by which the knower is the known, the love in which beloved and lover are one, all stood in an original plentitude, hushed and fulfilled before they could create the glorious dream of their universal acts. Here was engendered the spiritual birth. Here closed the finite's crawl to the infinite. 
A thousand roads leaped into eternity, or sinking ran to meet God's veilless face. The known released him from its limiting chain. He knocked at the doors of the unknowable. Thence gazing with an immeasurable outlook, one with self's inlook into our own into its own pure vasts. He saw the splendor of the spirit's realms, the greatness and wonder of its boundless works, the power and passion leaping from its calm, the rapture of its movement and its rest, and its fire-sweet miracle of transcendent life, the million-pointing, undivided grasp, of its vision of one same stupendous all, its inexhaustible acts in a timeless time, a space that is its own infinity, a glorious multiple of one radiant self, answering to joy with joy, to love with love. All there were moving mansions of God bliss. Eternal and unique they lived the one. There, forces are great outbursts of God's truth, and objects are its pure spiritual shapes. Spirit no more is hid from its own view. All sentience is a sea of happiness, and all creation is an act of light. Out of the neutral silence of his soul, he passed to its fields of puissance and of calm. He saw the powers that stand above the world, traversed the realms of the supreme idea, and sought the summit of created things and the almighty source of cosmic change. There, knowledge called him to her mystic peaks, where thought is held in a vast internal sense, and feeling swims across a sea of peace, and vision climbs beyond the reach of time, an equal of the first creator seers, Accompanied by an all-revealing light, he moves through regions of transcendent truth, inward, immense, innumerably one. Their distance was his own huge spirit's extent. Delivered from the fictions of the mind, time's triple dividing step baffled no more. Its inevitable and continuous stream, the long flow of its manifesting course, was held in spirit's single wide regard. A universal beauty showed its face, the invisible deep-fraught significances, here sheltered behind form's insensible screen, uncovered to him their deathless harmony and the key to the wonder book of common things. In their uniting law stood up revealed the multiple measures of the upbuilding force, the lines of the world geometer's technique, the enchantments that uphold the cosmic web, and the magic underlying simple shapes. On peaks where silence listens with the still heart to the rhythmic meters of the rolling worlds, he serves the sessions of the triple fire. On the rim of two continents of slumber and trance, he heard the ever unspoken reality's voice, awaken revelation's mystic cry, the birthplace found of the sudden infallible word, and lived in the rays of an intuitive sun. Absolved from the ligaments of death and sleep, he rode the lightning seas of cosmic mind and crossed the ocean of original sound on the last step to the supernal birth. He trod along extinction's narrow edge near the high verges of eternity and mounted the gold ridge of the world dream between the slayer and savior fires. The belt he reached of the unchanging truth met borders of the inexpressible light and thrilled with the presence of the ineffable. Above him he saw the flaming hierarchies, the wings that fold around created space, the sun-eyed guardians and the golden sphinx, and the tiered plains and the immutable lords. A wisdom waiting on omniscience sat voiceless in a vast passivity, 
It judged not, measured not, nor strove to know, but listened for the veiled, all-seeing thought and the burden of a calm, transcendent voice. He had reached the top of all that can be known. His sight surpassed creation's head and base. Ablaze, the triple heavens revealed their sons. The obscure abyss exposed its monstrous rule. All but the ultimate mystery was his field. Almost the unknowable disclosed its rim. His self's infinities began to emerge. The hidden universes cried to him. Eternities called to eternities, sending their speechless message still remote, arisen from the marvel of the depths and burning from the superconscious heights and sweeping in great horizontal gyres. A million energies joined and were one. All flowed immeasurably to one sea. All living forms became its atom homes. A panergy that harmonized all life held now existence in its vast control. A portion of that majesty he was made. At will he lived in the unoblivious ray. In that high realm where no untruth can come, where all are different and all is one, in the impersonal's ocean without shore, the person in the world spirit anchored rode. It thrilled with the mighty marchings of world force. Its acts were the comrades of God's infinite peace. An adjunct glory and a symbol self, the body was delivered to the soul. An immortal point of power, a block of poise, in a cosmicity's wide formless surge, a conscious edge of the transcendent's might, carving perfection from a bright world stuff, it figured in it a universe's sense. Their consciousness was a close and single weft, the far and near were one in spirit space, the moments there were pregnant with all time. The superconscious screen was ripped by thought. Idea rotated symphonies of sight. Sight was a flamethrower from identity. Life was a marvelous journey of the spirit. Feeling away from the universal bliss in the kingdom of the spirit's power and light, as if one who arrived out of infinity's womb he came newborn, infant and limitless, and grew in the wisdom of the timeless child. He was a vast that soon became a son. A great luminous silence whispered to his heart, his knowledge and in-view caught unfathomable, an out-view by no brief horizons cut. He thought and felt in all, his gaze had power. He communed with the incommunicable, Beings of a wider consciousness were his friends. Forms of a larger, subtler make drew near. The gods conversed with him behind life's veil. Neighbor his being grew to nature's crests. The primal energy took him in its arms. His brain was wrapped in overwhelming light. An all-embracing knowledge seized his heart. Thoughts rose in him no earthly mind can hold. Mites played that never coursed through mortal nerves. He scanned the secrets of the overmind. He bore the rapture of the oversoul. A borderer of the empire of the sun, attuned to the supernal harmonies, he linked creation to the eternal sphere. His finite parts approached their absolutes. His actions framed the movements of the gods. His will took up the reins of cosmic force. That's the end of Canto 15 and the end of Book 2 of the poem Savitri by Sri Aurobindo. Book 3, The Book of the Divine Mother. 
Canto One of Book Three, The Pursuit of the Unknowable. All seems too little that the world can give. Its power and knowledge are the gifts of time and cannot fill the spirit's sacred thirst. Although of one these forms of greatness are, and by its breath and grace our lives abide, although more near to us than nearness is self, it is some other truth of what we are. Hidden by its own works, it seemed far off, impenetrable, occult, voiceless, obscure. The presence was lost by which all things have charm, the glory lacked of which they are dim signs, the world lived on, made empty of its cause. Like love when the beloved's face is gone. The labor to know seemed a vain strife of mind. All knowledge ended in the unknowable. The effort to rule was a vain pride of will, a trivial achievement scorned by time. All power retired into the omnipotent. A cave of darkness guards the eternal light. A silence settled on his striving heart. Absolved from the voices of the world's desire, he turned to the ineffable's timeless call. A being intimate and unnameable, a wide compelling ecstasy and peace, felt in himself and all, and yet ungrasped, approached and faded from his soul's pursuit, as if forever luring him from beyond, as if forever luring him beyond. Near it retreated, far it called him still. Nothing could satisfy but its delight. Its absence left the greatest actions dull. Its presence made the smallest seem divine. When it was there, the heart's abyss was filled. But when the uplifting deity withdrew, existence lost its aim in the inane. The order of the immemorial planes, the godlike fullness of the instruments, were turned to props for an impermanent scene. But who that mightiness, but who that mightiness was, he knew not yet. Impalpable, yet filling all that is, it made and blotted out a million worlds, and took and lost a thousand shapes and names. It wore the guise of an indiscernible vast, or was a subtle kernel in the soul. A distant greatness left it huge and dim. A mystic clo closeness shut it sweetly in. It seemed sometimes a figment or a robe, and seemed sometimes his own colossal shade. A giant doubt overshadowed his advance. Across a neutral, all-supporting void, whose blankness nursed his lone, immortal spirit, allured towards some recondite supreme, aided, coerced by enigmatic powers, aspiring and half-sinking and upborne, invincibly he ascended without pause. Always a signless, vague immensity brooded, without approach, beyond response, condemning finite things to nothingness, fronting him with the incommensurable. Then to the ascent there came a mighty term. A height was reached where nothing made could live, a line where every hope and search must cease, neared some intolerant bare reality a zero form pregnant with boundless change. On a dizzy verge where all disguises fail, and human mind must abdicate in light, or die like a moth in the naked blaze of truth, he stood compelled to a tremendous choice. All he had been, and all towards which he grew, must now be left behind or else transform into a self of that which has no name, alone and fronting an intangible force which offered nothing to the grasp of thought, his spirit faced the adventure of the inane. Abandoned by the world of form, he strove. 
A fruitful worldwide ignorance foundered here. Thought's long, far-circling journey touched its close, and ineffective paused the actor will. The simple modes of being help no more. The structures nescience builds, collapsing, failed, and even the spirit that holds the universe fainted in the luminous insufficiency. In an abysmal lapse of all things built, transcending every perishable support and joining at last its mighty origin, the separate self must melt or be reborn into a truth beyond the mind's appeal. All glory of outline, sweetness of harmony, rejected like a grace of trivial notes, expunged from being silence, nude, austere, died into a fine and blissful nothingness. The demiurges lost their names and forms. The great schemed worlds that they had planned or wrought passed, taken and abolished one by one. The universe removed its colored veil, and at the unimaginable end of the huge riddle of created things appeared the far-seen godhead of the whole, his feet firm based on life's stupendous wings, omnipotent, a lonely seer of time, inward, inscrutable, with diamond gaze. Attracted by the unfathomable regard, the unsolved slow cycles to their fount returned to rise again from that invisible sea. All from his puissance born was now undone. Nothing remained the cosmic mind conceives. Eternity prepared to fade and seemed a hue and imposition on the void. Space was the fluttering of a dream that sank before its ending into nothingness nothing's deeps. The spirit that dies not and the Godhead self seemed myths projected from the unknowable. From it all sprang and it is called to cease. But what that was no thought nor sight could tell. Only a formless form of self was left a tenuous ghost of something that had been the last experience of a lapsing wave before it sinks into a bornless sea, as if it kept even on the brink of naught its bare feeling of the ocean whence it came. A vastness brooded free from the sense of space, an everlastingness cut off from time, a strange, sublime, inalterable peace, silent, rejected from it world and soul. A stark, companionless reality, answered at last to his soul's passionate search. Passionless, wordless, absorbed in its fathomless hush, keeping the mystery none would ever pierce, it brooded inscrutable and intangible, facing him with its dumb, tremendous calm. It had no kinship with the universe. There was no act, no movement in its vast. Life's question met by its silence died on her lips. The world's efforts ceased, convicted of ignorance, finding no sanction of supernal light. There was no mind there with its need to know, there was no heart there with its need to love. All person perished in its namelessness. There was no second, it had no partner or peer. Only itself was real to itself. A pure existence safe from thought and mood, a consciousness of unshared immortal bliss. It dwelt aloof in its bare infinite, one and unique, unutterably soul, a being formless, featureless, and mute, that knew itself by its own timeless self, aware forever of its motionless depths, uncreating, uncreated, and unborn, the one by whom all live, who lives by none, an immeasurable luminous secrecy, guarded by the veils of the unmanifest, 
above the changing cosmic interlude, abode supreme, immutably the same, a silent cause occult, impenetrable, infinite, eternal, unthinkable, alone. The end of Canto 1 of Book 3. Canto 2, The Adoration of the Divine Mother. A stillness absolute, incommunicable, meets the sheer self-discovery of the soul. A wall of stillness shuts it from the world. A gulf of stillness swallows up the sense and makes unreal all that mind has known, all that the laboring senses still would weave, prolonging an imaged unreality. Self's vast spiritual silence occupies space. Only the inconceivable is left. Only the nameless without shape and time. Abolished is the burdening need of life. Thought falls from us. We cease from joy and grief. The ego is dead. We are freed from being and care. We have done with birth and death and work and fate. O oh soul, it is too early to rejoice. Thou hast reached the boundless silence of the self. Thou hast leaped into a glad divine abyss. But where hast thou thrown self's mission and self's power? On what dead bank on the eternal's road? Or was within thee who was self and world, who hast, what hast thou done for his purpose in the stars? Escape brings not the victory and the crown, something thou camest to do from the unknown, but nothing is finished and the world goes on, because only half God's cosmic work is done. Only the, on, only the everlasting no has neared, and stared into thy eyes and killed thy heart. But where is the lover's everlasting yes, and immortality in the secret heart, the voice that chants to the creator fire, the symboled om, the great assenting word? The bridge between the rapture and the calm, the passion and the beauty of the bride, the chamber where the glorious enemies kiss, the smile that saves, the golden peak of things. This too is truth at the mystic fount of life. A black veil has been lifted. We have seen the mighty shadow of the omniscient Lord. But who has lifted up the veil of light? And who has seen the body of the King? The mystery of God's birth and acts remains, leaving unbroken the last chapter's seal. Unsolved the riddle of the unfinished play. The cosmic player laughs within his mask, and still the last and violet secret hides behind the human glory of a form, behind the gold adolin of a name. A large white line has figured as a goal, but far beyond the ineffable sun tracks blaze. What seemed the source and end was a wide gate. A last bare step into eternity. An eye has opened upon timelessness. Infinity takes back the forms it gave. And through God's darkness or his naked light, his million rays return into the sun. There is a zero sign of the supreme. Nature left nude and still uncovers God. But in her grandiose nothingness, all is there. When her strong garbs are torn away from us, the soul's ignorance is slain, but not the soul. The zero covers an immortal face. A high and blank negation is not all. A huge extinction is not God's last word. Life's ultimate sense, the close of being's course, the meaning of this great mysterious world. In absolute silence sleeps an absolute power. Awaking, it can wake the trance-bound soul and in the ray reveal the parent sun. 
It can make the world a vessel of spirit's force. It can fashion in the clay God's perfect shape. To free the self is but one radiant pace. Here to fulfill himself was God's desire. Even while he stood on being's naked edge, and all the passion and seeking of his soul faced their extinction in some featureless vast, the presence he yearned for suddenly drew close. Across the silence of the ultimate calm, out of a marvelous transcendence core, a body of wonder and translucency, as if a sweet mystic summary of herself, escaping into the original bliss, had come enlarged out of eternity, someone came infinite and absolute, a being of wisdom, power, and delight. Even as a mother draws her child to her arms, took to her breast nature and world and soul, abolishing the signless emptiness, breaking the vacancy and voiceless hush, piercing the limitless unknowable into the liberty of the motionless depths, a beautiful and felicitous luster stole. The power, the light, the bliss no word can speak imaged itself in a surprising beam and built a golden passage to his heart, touching through him all longing sentient things. A moment's sweetness of the all-beautiful canceled the vanity of the cosmic world. A nature throbbing with a heart divine was felt in the unconscious universe. It made the breath a happy mystery. A love that bore the cross of pain with joy Edumanized the sorrow of the world, made happy the weight of long unending time, the secret caught of God's felicity. Affirming in life a hidden ecstasy, it felt the spirit to its miraculous court. It held the spirit to its miraculous course, carrying immortal values to the hours. It justified the labor of the suns. For one was there supreme behind the God, a mother might brooded upon the world, a consciousness revealed its marvelous front, transcending all that is, denying none. Imperishable above our fallen heads, he felt a rapturous and unstumbling force. The undying truth appeared, the enduring power of all that here is made and then destroyed the mother of all godheads and all strengths, who, mediatrix, mm -hmm, binds earth to the supreme. The enigma cease that rules our nature's night. The covering nescience was unmasked and slain. Its mind of error was stripped off from things, and the dull moods of its perverting will Illumined by her all-seeing identity, knowledge and ignorance could strive no more. No longer could the titan opposites, antagonist poles of the world's artifice, impose the illusion of their twofold screen, throwing their figures behind us, between us and her. The wisdom was near, disguised by its own works, of which the darkened universe is the robe. No more existence seemed an aimless fall. Extinction was no more the sole release. The hidden word was found. The long-sought clue revealed was the meaning of our spirit's birth. Condemned to an imperfect body and mind in the inconscience of material things and the indignity of mortal life. A heart was felt in the spaces wide and bare. A burning love from white spiritual founts annulled the sorrow of the ignorant depths. Suffering was lost in her immortal smile. A life from beyond grew conqueror here of death. To err no more was natural to mind. Wrong could not come where all was light and love. The formless and the formed were joined in her. Immensity was exceeded by a look 
a face revealed the crowded infinite, incarnating expressibly in her limbs the boundless joy the blind world forces seek, her body of beauty moon the seas of bliss. At the head she stands of birth and toil and fate. In their slow rounds the cycles turn to her call. Alone her hands can change time's dragon base. Here is the mystery the night conceals. The spirit's alchemist energy is hers. She is the golden bridge, the wonderful fire. The luminous heart of the unknown is she. A power of silence in the depths of God, she is the force, the inevitable word, the magnet of our difficult ascent, the sun from which we kindle all our suns, the light that leans from the unrealized vasts, the joy that beckons from the impossible, the might of all that never yet came down. All nature dumbly calls to her alone to heal with her feet the aching throb of life and break the seals on the dim soul of man and kindle her fire in the closed heart of things. All here shall be one day her sweetness's home. All contraries prepare her harmony. Towards her our knowledge climbs, our passion gropes. In her miraculous rapture we shall dwell. Her clasp shall turn to ecstasy, our pain. One's self shall be one's self with all through her. In her confirmed, because transformed in her, our life shall find its fulfilled response. Above the boundless hushed beatitudes. Above the boundless hushed beatitudes. Below the wonder of the embrace divine. This known as in a thunder flash of God, the rapture of things eternal filled his limbs. Amazement fell upon his ravished sense. His spirit was caught in her intolerant flame. Once seen, his heart acknowledged only her. Only a hunger of infinite bliss was left. All aims in her were lost, then found in her. His base was gathered to one pointing spire. This was a seed cast into endless time. A word is spoken or a light is shown. A moment sees the ages toil to express. So flashing out of the timeless leap the worlds. An eternal instant is the cause of the years. All he had done was to prepare a field. His small beginnings asked for a mighty end. For all that he had been, must now reshape in him her joy to embody, to enshrine, her beauty and greatness in his house of life. But now his being was too wide for self. His heart's demand had grown immeasurable. His single freedom could not satisfy her light, her bliss he asked for earth and men. But vain are human power and human love to break earth's seal of ignorance and death. His nature's might seem now an infant's grasp. Heaven is too high for outstretched hands to seize. This light comes not by struggle or by thought. In the mind's silence the transcendent acts, and the hushed heart hears the unuttered word. A vast surrender was his only strength. A power that lives upon the heights must act. Bring into life's closed room the immortal's air and fill the finite with the infinite. All that denies must be torn out and slain and crush the many longings for whose sake we lose the one for whom our lives were made, if we choose that. Now other claims had hushed in him their cry only he longed to draw her presence and power into his heart and mind and breathing frame. Only he yearned to call forever down his healing touch of love and truth and joy into the darkness of the suffering world. His soul was freed and given to her alone. 
That is the end of Canto 2 of Book 3 of the poem Savitry by Sri Aurobundo. And this is the end of Video 12 of the poem Savitry by Sri Aurobindo.